So today's video is another story time. You guys really liked me talking, uh, telling you guys a little bit of more of my personal life and like stories and stuff that's happened. So today's video is going to be my labor and delivery video of my first daughter because the story that I started was with my first daughter. So this is going to be my story on how I ended up getting an emergency C-section and everything that happened because it was just crazy. So I want to start by, um, I'm almost due, I'm at my due, almost due date. And uh, remember my due date is November 15. And I remember getting ready. I already had my baby shower. I did have two baby showers, one for my mom and one for my mother-in-law. So I was kind of getting ready to, you know, become a mom. My husband's like, we need to walk. So when you have the baby, you're not going to have a problem. You know, everything's going to be good. And so he just wanted me to kind of be active because all I wanted to do was sleep. So he would take me to his old high school because we lived across the street from there and he would take me to walk and I really fucking hated walking because I was like man I'd rather just be sleeping and eating and I just fucking hated it like he would make me walk and I'm like oh I don't want to walk I hate literally I hate exercising you guys like it's hard for me to like exercise I'll probably do it but for me to exercise is like no so I don't know where he got it from or who told him but they said that if I didn't walk I, the baby would like in Spanish they would say se te pega el niño y vas a tener complicaciones and all this crazy stuff so he's just like oh you know I don't want you to end up having a c-section blah 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 I won't be with you if you have a c-section he would tell me I guess to scare me so I would want to walk and not get a c-section so whatever so um when you're pregnant you do kind of get I forgot what they're called Braxton Hicks or something like that it's like false labor pains something like that so i remember we went out one night and i was pregnant so pregnant i started feeling contractions and i was like fuck am i going into labor i remember it, it would hurt because they're like very strong period cramps and he decides he wanted to eat some nachos so we actually drove to downtown la to get some nachos from this like restaurant it's like a little tiny restaurant and while he was getting nachos i was in like having contractions and i was like fuck this food don't hurry up i'm over here having pain and he's over there trying to get some nachos like really so you know he came back with his nachos whatever and then the pain went away so i was like oh it was false but if that's what it feels like oh my god i don't think i'm ready for it so i would get those randomly but we wouldn't go to the hospital because i know it wasn't like pain or anything like that i couldn't handle uh, so one night well not one night but mostly every night after that like when i was getting closer to my due date i would wake up in the middle of the night with cramping and when i would go pee they would go away so i was thinking oh it's just my bladder telling me that i need to pee so one day uh one night i woke up and i remember looking at the clock and it said it was two o'clock in the morning and i'm like damn cramping i need to go pee so i got up and i went to pee and when i cleaned myself i saw blood so i was like oh is this normal so it was two in the morning mind that um i didn't know and i don't know if i should call my mom or wake anybody up you know my husband was asleep so this was a friday i believe it was a friday that this happened it was gonna i think it was saturday whatever i don't know i don't remember um so i ended up getting in the shower and i was like thinking okay i need to shower you know hopefully i'll fall back to sleep so i showered whatever and then i would try to go back to sleep but then i noticed that I, the pain was still there i still felt contractions and i'm like thinking oh my god probably it so i ended up calling my mom and i told my mom what happened you know i went to pee and i cleaned myself and i saw that i was bleeding so I didn't know if it was me going into labor. So she's like, you're going into labor. You need to head to the hospital. So I remember waking up my husband, telling him I'm in labor. I have contractions. We need to go to the hospital. So his idea of leaving to the hospital was to get into the shower first. So I'm over here, you know, with pain. Well, it wasn't really pain, you guys. Like, I felt like there were cramps. But I was good. Like, I wasn't like, oh my god, I'm going to die. I was good. I just had cramps. And it was just like, 
go like i would feel it and then i can feel it feeling better i was like oh okay it's gone it went away i'm good and i'll be okay for a few minutes and then it would come back again so he was in the shower taking forever and that time my brother-in-law used to live with us and he would get home like around like in the middle of the morning kind of like around five or something like that six something like that um mind you i had woken up at two in the morning with contractions that i didn't know there were contractions like that i was actually labor i thought it was like pee contractions i need to pee so it was like probably like six when my brother-in-law got home and he's like why are you up and i'm like oh i'm in labor so he goes and knocks into the my husband into the bathroom and tells my husband hey your wife is in labor hurry up you know so we ended up going to the hospital so when you go to the hospital um there's like a separate building to where you go where pregnant women that are gonna give labor and like surgeries and like other emergency hospital it's on the other side so i had to go into the pregnant one i went up to the second floor you know i let them know that i was in labor and they're like okay so we're gonna see if we have any beds available you know and we'll call you in so i remember waiting and i would get like the cramps i was not crying because it was not painful i felt fine if i was sitting or walking around i didn't feel like it hurt that bad it was when they put me and like told me to change my clothes, put my gown on and lay down and then they were like gonna monitor me and everything. That's when it started hurting. So let me tell you, they have like a bunch of little beds and little curtains are like kind of blocking us from each other. So it was more pregnant women. I can hear them cussing like, fuck it hurts. Ow, and I can hear all this shit and I'm like, fuck, hello, like, I'm scared. you're scaring the shit out of me. So when I was laying down, I can feel the contractions like we're getting stronger and it hurt more. But I didn't know if I could get up or not. I didn't want to get up from the bed and just like stand up because I don't know if it was going to pop out or something. So I just like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm grabbing onto the blankets and I'm like, fuck, it hurts. Like, I now I feel what they feel. So then they came in to check me. And they told me I was four and a half centimeters open already. So they told me, um, I don't know how much you have to be open so they can actually transfer you to a room that where you're going to actually give um, birth to, um, have the baby in. So um, they were like, we're going to go look for a room because you're already progressing. You know, you might be having the baby anytime soon, you know. So I was like, OK, that's fine. You know, and I'm like thinking, damn, it's already going to happen. This is this is coming this is happening all too fast you know and they always told me that usually when it's your first baby it always like takes forever for, for it to happen the more, ki more kids you have the faster you have them or something like that so i'm thinking why is like you know it's it's happening so um they found a room told me they were ready but they couldn't find a uh wheelchair to take me to the to the room and all I wanted, because let me tell you, in this place that they had us, there's no visitors. They don't let your husband or your mother or your sister come or nothing like that. Um, so I'm still waiting. Like, I want to see my husband. Honestly, like, um, and this might be like another different story or something. But every time I've had surgery, I feel so safe when my husband is around. Like, he'll come, he'll stay with me the night. I have to like sleep holding his hand or hugging in his arm or something for me to feel safe and comfortable and to know that everything is okay when he's around so practically that's what I wanted I wanted him to be there so while I'm over there you know they're getting monitoring me waiting for me to like move me to a room I didn't know this until after I had the baby this is like in that moment that it happened my sister and my mom were waiting in the waiting room they came because they were um, I had said that I wanted them to be in the room when I had the baby so I could have people in there because that was a big room so I was gonna be my husband my mom and my sister that were gonna be there for me when I had the baby and um, this lady came in that's what my sister told me she was like having contractions and I guess that they had gone there before and she had not had the actual contractions like they were the Braxton Hicks I think they're called and they they were false so they sent her back home so they really didn't take her serious but at the same time there was no beds for them to bring her in so they had her in the waiting room um in pain and my mom said that the lady had the baby in front of them my husband was just sitting there watching this all happen they had my mom my sister had to pull the pants of the lady off and they fucking grabbed the baby coming out of her and stuff and my husband was like the whole time like 
what the fuck just happened so he's just staring at all this blood and everything and then my sister and my mom are holding the baby and then that's when the nurses start coming and they're like oh you know trying to push my mom and i was like wait i'm holding the baby like what do you want me to do it's still connected to the lady so that drama was going on while i was having i was like waiting then they told me they didn't have like a wheelchair for me to like send me to a room so i told them it's fine i can walk i'm not gonna die i can walk so mind you i was four and a half centimeters when they checked me the last i walked to the room and they laid me on the bed and they had all the things they put the monitors on they had everything ready let me tell you something i'm a person that always likes to keep it clean down there shaved looking nice you know gotta look, make it look good for the husband you know you never know when he wants to you know so what happened they still shave you anyway so they kind of just go in there and shave and you're like what the fuck like why are you down there lady like no but i mean at this point you can't be shy anymore because they gotta do what they gotta do to have you ready for like when you have the baby so i can only imagine people that don't shave when they go in there and they shave them it's like ooh. so yeah so they do shave they shaved me right and i'm like still like kind of tripping out i was getting contractions so the doctor comes in and he's like oh has your water broke yet or anything and i'm like no they're like okay i'm gonna check you and if you're ready i'm going to pop your water and you know we're gonna get everything ready so when they walk me in they put the monitor and everything they check me i was already seven and a half centimeters open and they were like whoa like that is just fast like you're opening fast like it's just happening so quick so i don't know the terms because i'm not a nurse or anything i don't know how when is it that you can get the epidural or the iv medicine i don't know what it was at what time really Elotero? really so i don't know at what time they can give it to you and not give it to you anymore so by my understanding i have no idea what happened so they had asked me if i wanted pain medication and i said yes i'm not sure but i heard that the nurse was a new person there so she really didn't know what the fuck she was doing she gave me something at the iv that was knocking me out so mind you they checked me i was already seven and a half open the doctor broke my water the nurse came in and gave me pain medication that supposedly she wasn't supposed to do anymore because i was already past that line or i don't know what it was whatever it was so i remember when my contraction came after they broke my water it hurt like a motherfucker like i have no fucking idea it hurt so it went away i felt it i felt it but then when i was having that contraction i saw my mom come in my mom came into the room she walked into the bathroom and then i saw my husband coming in with the camera so I was like, okay, he's here, you know, and I'm going to be okay. Then after that contraction went, I remember I pulled to my side because I don't know if you guys ever do. I used to play soccer. So if you run without breathing right, you kind of get like a pain in your like lung or something. Like the air goes in and it kind of hurts. So you got to kind of help it come out. I had that pain after the first contraction. And it wouldn't go away but then the medicine was already hitting me so i was already like drowsing off like i was knocking out and then i remember closing my eyes and then when i opened my eyes again like everything was happening so fast i saw like a nurse coming in and pushing my stomach in and i was like pushing her off like hello bitch i'm fucking pregnant you're squishing my baby like get away so then i closed my eyes again and i opened my eyes again and i saw a bunch of like nurses and it, it was just a bunch of people around me like something bad was happening but i didn't know because i was knocking out and then i remember closing my eyes again and then i opened my eyes again and then that's when i saw like the lady put a clipboard in front of me it was a yellow paper she asked me that i needed to sign it because they were going to do an emergency c-section and i remember the first thought that came to my head was like my husband said he doesn't want me to get a c-section that's the last thing he wanted me to get that that's why he wanted me to walk you know so i remember i was like i told them that i wasn't gonna sign it and then they told me and then my husband came and he's like sign it baby sign it baby and i'm like no you said you didn't want me to sign it and i was falling asleep again and however i could i signed it and i knocked out mind you i'm embarrassed so i didn't take off my bra when i put my gown so i wasn't i was wearing a bra because i felt so uncomfortable to take off my bra i remember them had me in the surgery table they sit me up and they saw that i was still wearing my bra they took my bra off 
and then I fell asleep again. When I woke up again, I was already like laying down. My legs were numb. So I guess they had already done the back part thing, the epidural, whatever it is. And then I closed my eyes again. And then I opened my eyes again. Then I saw my husband next to me. And then I saw the blanket like in the front. And then I fell asleep again. I woke up again. And then I saw um, when they brought the baby out. I They said, I, oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember because it's been like 10, almost 11 years. They brought the when they brought the baby out. I remember looking up at my husband, and the last thing I saw was my husband crying of so happiness of seeing the, our baby that I knocked out again. I did not wake up until I was like in the recovery room. The first thing I asked was about my baby, and then I asked I wanted to see my husband. So my husband came in, he told me she was fine and everything, but they couldn't let me get out of the recovery room until. I could move my legs like kind of lift my legs up and wiggle my toes that's when they were going to let me into a room and I was just like telling myself in my head like okay you need to move your legs already because you need to go see your baby you want to see your baby you've been waiting for this so I'm there telling my head wiggle come on wiggle and I couldn't do it because you know it's the medicine is really strong so when I was finally able to they um, took me to my room and everything the first thing I did was I want to see my daughter I want to see my daughter so that day they did bring the baby I got to see my baby and I asked my mom like what happened like why did I end up with a um, an emergency c-section they're like oh well what the lady wasn't supposed to give you like any more medicine wasn't supposed to give you any medicine because you were already too far along like already to have the baby so the medicine affected the baby's heart and it was kind of dropping so the baby's heart was like really low so they had to do an emergency c-section so there was nothing that i could do so i remember that when uh, the baby was coming out i think he wasn't supposed to look my husband but he looked up like on top of the curtain to see the baby he saw i guess when they were taking out the placenta he saw that guys like i'm not joking my husband doesn't like to see blood or anything like that. He, he couldn't eat food for like a month. He couldn't. He wanted to pass out. He wanted to throw up. He couldn't look at food for like a month. He had to like drink um, caldos and, you know, soups and stuff like that because he was so grossed out. Like he does, he can't see blood. So I ended up having my baby. My baby was six pounds, six ounces. You know, I think she was 21 and a half um, long and she was fine she was healthy and everything it was just that about the medicine that happened but yeah that's like practically my crazy emergency c-section story and it's just crazy because now she's 11 she's almost 11 years old you guys and she's like i always tell her like oh, you were not born down there girl you were right here from my stomach she's like where do your babies come from like where do they come up girl they come out of the stomach i got proof got the c-section the cut right there you can see it so but she knows where they really come from but that was really crazy and you know i felt a lot better now that my baby was born and my husband was there my family was there and everything was just great so yeah i really hope you guys enjoy my crazy story of my emergency c-section um, if you guys want any more videos, let me know down below. If you guys can definitely relate, something happened to you guys the same way, leave them down below. Um, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, you guys can definitely help me out by voting. What what else do you guys want to see at story time? I know my kind of some of my story times are kind of crazy of shit that really happened to me, and you know I definitely want to be more open with you guys. I want to be able to. Do more than just beauty beauty videos on this channel. I want to be able to like kind of talk to you guys. Sit there and then the fucking raspado el otero guy won't fucking stop honking and shit. Gosh. But yeah, definitely follow me on my social media, you guys. I'll link them down below. I want to thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, guys.